An atomic energy power plant. Nuclear power station. Exclusively devoted. We're receiving power produced by nuclear reactors. Is a nuclear renaissance about to begin on the very site of the public relations catastrophe that practically destroyed the industry 45 years ago? Constellation Energy is reopening Three Mile Island to provide power for Microsoft's AI street, and data a network. A lot of people excited about the potential reopening of Three Mile Intelligence. Island. Intelligence. Is this the beginning of something much bigger in this country? I think so. Are all environmentalists okay with nuclear or will they oppose this? Constellation Energy recently announced a deal with Microsoft to restore a retired reactor on Pennsylvania's Three Mile Island. Microsoft has agreed to purchase energy from the plant for 20 years to power its AI data centers. A U.S. nuclear reactor has never before been brought out of retirement. Nuclear power was once considered the clean energy source of the future, with dozens of new plants coming online in the late 60s and early 70s. But in March of 1979, a meltdown occurred at Three Mile Island's nuclear plant. It was the first step in a nuclear nightmare. It was 4 o'clock in the morning. There was a mechanical failure, then a human failure. Steam. Throughout the day, chaos and confusion reigned as monitors tried to determine exactly how much radiation was released. And questions what clouded the atmosphere like atomic particles. Please stay indoors with your windows closed. There were no casualties, and there was no lingering environmental damage, but the incident spooked the nation. From a publicity standpoint, the timing was disastrous. Three Mile Island occurred while the China Syndrome, a fictional account of safety cover-ups at a nuclear plant, was still in theaters, featuring Jane Fonda, Jack Lemmon, and Michael Douglas. It will start with a tremor in a nuclear power plant. Where it will end will depend on three people. The closer they get, the more threatening it becomes. After Three Mile Island, what was considered to be the best interest of the public was just reducing risk as low as possible. And all of it resulted in a huge volume of regulations that anybody that wanted to build a new reactor had to know. It made the learning curve much steeper to even attempt to innovate in the industry. Adam Stein is the director of the Nuclear Energy Innovation Program at the Breakthrough Institute. The number one lesson of the Three Mile Island incident was that we needed to revise emergency preparedness regulations, which did happen, and it was appropriate to do so. The biggest problem with what happened at Three Mile Island was they didn't know what to do in the event of an incident. We still are working in that area, but at that time, we just weren't prepared. The second result was you had a full meltdown of a reactor and there was no severe impacts to the public. It was a public relations disaster for the nuclear industry, and the industry's expansion tapered off, concluding in a 20-year spell in which no new nuclear reactors were built in the U.S. My view is that these supposedly environmentalist groups formed in the 1970s that are not primarily pro-environment, they're really primarily anti-nuclear. The writer Eric Dawson is the co-founder of Nuclear New York, a group fighting to protect the industry on the grounds that nuclear is, quote, the most scalable, reliable, efficient, land-conserving, material-sparing, zero-emission source of energy ever created. He says that Three Mile Island empowered the anti-nuclear movement. That same year, about 200,000 anti-nuclear activists crowded into New York City's Battery Park City, capping off a week-long concert featuring Pete Seeger, Jackson Brown, and Bonnie Raitt, which raised awareness and funding for the anti-nuclear movement. Stopping atomic energy is practicing patriotism, Ralph Nader told the crowd. Stopping atomic energy is fighting cancer. Stopping atomic energy is fighting inflation. They are a generation that was radicalized from the Vietnam War. They became anti-war. They then became anti-nuclear weapons. And then they conflated nuclear weapons with nuclear energy. And they made it their mission to shut down nuclear energy. An anti-nuclear power protest in New Hampshire a year ago. Similar demonstrations at other nuclear sites are planned this spring. And the emotional battle over nuclear energy goes on. And they succeeded in that mission. Environmentalists, in effect, may have crippled the only truly viable form of clean energy. The federal government makes permitting arduous. 
Many states severely restrict new plant construction and force operational ones to shut down prematurely. A striking recent example was the shutdown of Indian Point Energy Center, New York State's largest nuclear plant. I think it is insane, and this is a quote, I think it is insane to have a three-unit reactor on the banks of the Hudson, 20 miles from the Bronx, and 35 miles from Midtown Manhattan. Anti-nuclear activists had targeted the plant for decades. In 2007, they found a powerful ally in state attorney general and future governor Andrew Cuomo. I understand the power and the benefit. I also understand the risk. And this plant in this proximity to New York City was never a good risk. Of course, it's true that nuclear energy carries risk. So does every form of power generation. If you look at energy sources, there's nothing that's perfect. There is no utopia. Basically, we have a choice. Everything is compared to something else. Decades of political attacks on the nuclear industry have caused the United States to rely more on burning fossil fuels, which bring another set of risks. Nuclear would eliminate the majority of pollution-related fatalities in the US, which is thousands a year, because most of those come from coal-fired power plants currently. So you would be able to eliminate the largest health impact from pollution to the American public. As politicians have slowly realized that the dangers of nuclear power may have been exaggerated by activists and the benefits of a reliable emissions-free energy source underappreciated, the regulatory landscape has slowly changed. The first new U.S. reactor built from scratch since 1974 opened in Georgia in 2022, albeit at a very high cost. The federal government issued its first ever approval for a small modular reactor in January 2023. Constellation estimates that it will spend about $1.6 billion to bring the Three Mile Island reactor online by 2028, and it will seek to renew the operating license through 2054. Pennsylvania's governor, Josh Shapiro, wrote a letter to federal regulators asking that the application be fast-tracked. Microsoft's VP of Energy calls the deal a major milestone in the company's effort to decarbonize the grid while pursuing an AI-driven future that's going to require a lot of energy. The Microsoft deal is the latest piece of evidence that nuclear energy, after being hampered by decades of hypercautious regulation, is poised for a comeback. Let's hope Three Mile Island one day becomes a symbol for nuclear's rebirth. America deeply desires to join countries all over the globe in adapting the atom to the arts of peace. Hey, thanks for watching. Just wanted to let you know, I made a documentary that explores the history of nuclear power and its decline and possible renaissance in much greater detail right here.